okay <clears throat> good afternoon everybody uh, i hope you are doing good so in the last time in the last time actually we have some technical problems so uh, we couldn't conduct the zoom class uh, i guess you are uh, able to hear me okay so uh, you can just uh, type yes or no uh, so uh, i guess that uh, you were doing good and whatever the precautions you should take during this lockdown time to uh, fight with corona you are taking according to the health uh, department government of uh, india advice uh, but we have to uh, we have to uh, think about the reality we have to continue the classes whatever the routine we have to continue okay so i already sent you this ppt before uh, today i will cover some of the part of this pipeline flow corrosivity okay so pipeline flow corrosivity okay uh, i will discuss everything if you, if there is any comment any uh, questions after my lecture we will discuss okay so no need to raise your hand right now okay we will have time so today we will discuss the pipeline flow corrosivity uh, let's see what are the factors that influence the pipeline flow corrosivity as we know that when oil is flowing through the pipeline then there's a oil phase there's a water phase okay so definitely the water phase characteristics or emulsion okay sometimes oil and water is flowing through the pipeline maybe due to some driving force emulsion is produced so water phase characteristic is one of the important parameter that can influence the pipeline corrosion number two water weighting of the metal surface i mean the materials that are used for the preparation of the pipeline the based on the materials is weighting properties can also influence the pipeline corrosion number three is the multi-phase through design we'll discuss about the multi-phase flow design i mean based on your multi-phase flow okay what type of corrosion may happen we'll also discuss multi-phase flow velocity if your flow velocity is high then maybe your corrosion will be high if your flow velocity is low maybe it's low so it depends on the flow characteristics we'll see what type of corrosion may happen next uh, significance of the salinity if your flowing fluid is more saline then maybe corrosion rate as well as the corrosion of the pipeline will be hampered significance of co2 pressure there's some co2 corrosion is also um, happening so we'll see that in the flowing uh, time of the co2 or maybe some co2 mixed with the crude oil going to the pipeline what kind of corrosion may happen h2s also we know that there are sometimes uh, sour gases are produced during the production of crude oil so if h2s present then what type of corrosion may happen we will also discuss significance of o2 dissolve oxygen in your fluid if there's some dissolved oxygen in your fluid present then different types of corrosion may happen significance of ph based on the ph what type of corrosion will happen we will also see and another one is the temperature we already discussed the high temperature corrosion in, in case of hydrogen damage okay but uh, here also we will see that effect of temperature on the corrosion and finally we will see that material selection we have already discussed so many times material selection i mean in the composition in the in the metal if you have different alloying composition then uh, as we see that uh, galvanization okay or galvanic corrosion may happen and also the steel microstructure steel microstructure you can remember the intergranular corrosion okay so in case of intergranular corrosion we see that transgranular corrosion we also saw so that uh, there are some based on the microstructure there are different types of corrosion may happen okay so now see the mainly corrosivity of hydrocarbon fluid when you are talking about the corrosivity of hydrocarbon fluid then the fluid that is flowing through the pipeline uh, it's uh, maybe uh, based on the is accumulation point suppose you have a crude oil is flowing through the pipeline and after stopping the flow the crude oil and water it may accumulate in a particular place 
So that's why the corrosivity of the crude oil totally depends on different factors. Number one is the location where the water accumulates in the pipeline. Number two is the type of emulsion. What type of emulsion is produced after the flowing? Is it oil in water? It is water in oil. Okay, based on this oil in water, water in oil, or maybe mixed emulsion, the corrosion of the pipeline will be happened. Number three, weightability of the metal surface. As I said that if your uh, metal is oil weight or water weight, then based on these things, the corrosion may uh, differ. Another one is change in corrosion rate of the aqueous phase in the presence of crude oil. So once your different aqueous phase is present, then the rate of corrosion may happen, may change. Okay. So that will also influence the corrosion of the pipeline. Okay. Now, see here the water accumulation point. If we need to understand what happened actually uh, when water is just uh, accumulated in a certain pipeline. So basically, we already discussed the pitting corrosion. So why it's happening here actually pitting corrosion will happen. Now, as this is a wet corrosion, so there's some electrochemical reaction may take place as uh, water is present and maybe some salt is present. So you have already electrolytes, you have already um, uh, metallic part and also cathode anode. So electrochemical reaction may happen here. In the figure, we can see that uh, when you just drop the flow of the pipeline, then the heavier weight uh, sludge that totally settled down in the bottom and then the free water. And after that, maybe some oil and water is totally floating top of the surface. Okay. And based on this free water accumulation, so this portion will be damaged very high. Okay. If we see that free water has the maximum corrosivity action. So this portion may be, uh, uh, may face the corrosion very highly. So based on this picture, picture, we can say that accumulation of water in the particular pipeline and how it can affect the corrosion rate and also the corrosion of the pipeline. Uh, now, as we say that uh, oil in water and water in oil emulsion, so we should know that uh, what is emulsion and here we'll uh, study the emulsion properties, what is the emulsifier because as emulsion has a very significant influence on the corrosion, so we should learn about the emulsion. So what is the definition of emulsion? Uh, actually, emulsion can be defined as the colloid consisting of two or more non-homogeneous type of fluid. Non-homogeneous type of fluid, it means one fluid cannot be mixed in another fluid. Okay, so in an emulsion, one liquid is dispersed in other. The liquid that is the dispersed, this is a dispersed phase, and another one is the continuous phase. Okay, suppose oil in water. So oil is just, when you're adding the oil, so oil is a dispersed phase, and that water is a continuous phase. We'll see in the diagram, suppose you have first uh, oil and uh, water and oil, and then you are providing some driving force, and after a certain time, you'll see that the oil droplets is just uh, dispersed in the uh, continuous phase water and after certain time again once you stop steering of the solution then again they will accom uh, accommodate in the in this area this is called actually interface okay and again again once you give the maximum driving force to prepare the emulsion after certain time you will get an emulsion where the dispersed phase will be totally stabilized in the continuous phase so now let's see the properties of emulsion. What are the actual properties of emulsion? Uh, emulsion can contain uh, both a continuous and dispersed phase, as I said, and the line, okay, the boundary between the two phases are called the interface. Number two, emulsion have cloudy appearance due to many phase interfaces scattering light passing through the emulsion. Okay, because whenever you prepare some emulsion, suppose you have oil and water, water is clear and uh, oil has some uh, different uh, different color, and once you prepare, it will be cloudy appearance. Number three, emulsion appears in white color when the light is passed in the equal portion. So there's some uh, there's something happening like tingle effect. Okay, if you put some light, some blue light will be uh, just reflecting from the emulsion. That is called the tingle effect. That's why emulsion has has some 
ginger essence properties. Next, uh, let's see what are the different types of emulsion. As I said, that oil in water and water in oil. So oil in water means here. This is the, these are the droplets, small droplets are in uh, oil, and the continuous phase is the water. In other case, the water in oil. So water in oil means your maximum amount is the oil, and it's very small amount of water is added. Okay. So if I ask any question that okay, what is the emulsion? Or what are the different types of emulsion? And I just uh, give example of the oil in water emulsion and water in oil emulsion so here also there's some example is given oil in water emulsion like milk in milk actually fat globules are suspended in water and in case of water in oil is actually something like a, a spread uh, this is that is for the margarine okay a spread used for the flavoring baking or working okay so in margarine you will see that uh, there's some different dispersed um, particle is also in the continuous space okay it's actually used for the baking uh, cases now how to identify type of emulsion suppose uh, one emulsion is prepared and just you are given to the sample and you are asked can you identify the emulsion so for identifying an emulsion there are different types of uh, taste if we do the different type of case, then we can say the emulsion is oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. So first one is the dilution test. Another one is the conductivity test. Next, dye test. We have fluorescence test and the cobalt oxide test. Okay. So we will discuss all these tests uh, thoroughly because these tests are also important because uh, when you have some uh, sort of emulsion, then you have to identify. Okay. So we should know how to uh, do this dilution test also. Uh, okay, let's start from the dye test. In case of dye test, some of the dye, their nature is they are soluble in oil or maybe water. So when you are preparing oil in water emulsion, okay, so your oil is dispersed in the water with its continuous phase, and you are adding a oil soluble dye. So what will happen once you will add the dye, the oil globules or oil droplet, it will catch the dye and all the oils present in the emulsion will show the color. So you can see that only the droplets of oil is showing the color of the dye color. And then you can say this is oil in water emulsion. But oil in water emulsion, but if you see that your other things, I mean opposite things is happening, Okay, when you have water in oil emulsion, then you can say that uh, this is a uh, water in oil emulsion. So based on this taste, we can uh, classify a uh, emulsion. Is it a oil in water or water in oil? Here there's a um, schematic diagram is given. These are uh, water in oil emulsion. So it's oil soluble dry is given. So this is oil, this black portion. Okay, and it's got the color of the that dye. Okay, scarlet dye. And here you can see, see if it is oil in water, the small droplets are getting the color. Okay. And in case of water soluble dye, okay, as your water part is the small part, I mean the uh, I mean oil is the main continuous phase. So you will see that uh, all the droplets, okay, all the droplets are getting the dye color. Okay. So in this case, in this case, you can say that your Emulsion is oil in water or water in oil. Now, dilution test. So, here, if you have a particular emulsion, then if you go for the dilution test, then you can tell it that is it uh, oil in water or water in oil emulsion. So, based on the solubility, based on the <clears throat> solubility of the external phase of the emulsion, oil water emulsion can be diluted with water. Okay, once you are adding water, it can be diluted and water in oil emulsion can be diluted with oil because your continuous phase will be increased okay because it is oil in water so what is the continuous phase and once you are adding water then it will be more more diluted okay so based on this dilution test you can say that your emulsion is oil in water or water in oil. number three is the electrical conductivity test 
uh, as we know that water is a good conductor of electricity, whereas oil is non-conductor. So if we design in such a way that uh, there's an electrode which emerges in the emulsion, and the connection is given to a bulb, okay? And if the current is flowing from this side right to that side, then the bulb will just uh, show in the glow, okay? It can uh, just uh, show the light. So if there's a continuous space of water runs uh, is there, then what will happen when the electricity will pass? Okay, once you give the electricity, then you can say this is a oil in water. Okay, continuous space is your water. So in this way, you can also identify is it oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. Fluorescence test. In this case, when your oil gives fluorescence under the UV light, while water cannot give. Okay. So if you have a oil in water emulsion and that shows the spotty pattern when observed under the UV ray, then you can say this emulsion is oil in water. But on the other hand, your water in oil emulsion, that, uh, that also cannot give the fluorescence test. So in fluorescence test, if you have the emulsion, you have to first test. And if you see that uh, it's showing the uh, spotty pattern, okay, of this uh, U under the UV ray, then you can say that it's oil in water emulsion, uh, while it's water in oil emulsion, it will show the fluorescence. Okay, so one is broad, I mean, broad peak, one will give the broad peak and one will give the small peak actually. This one instrumental uh, technique. Mm, that if you use the instrument technique, then you can identify oil in water emulsion. And then the other one is cobalt chloride test. In cobalt chloride test, uh, the main principle is the cobalt chloride solution is used for identification of emulsion. Uh, it is water soluble, so changes color when encountered by water in oil emulsion. As cobalt chloride is water soluble, so if you have oil in water emulsion, then your continuous phase is the water. So once you will add cobalt chloride, that cobalt chloride will mix with the water phase. Okay, so you will see the whole continuous phase will change to the blue color. Okay, to the blue color, then you can say this is oil in water emulsion. So what is the procedure? First, uh, after doing this, first uh, filter paper is uh, is dipped in the emulsion, okay, and this filter paper changes its color from blue to pink, okay. Either you can see the changes of the color, or another thing is that if you use the uh, filter paper, that filter paper also will be changed, okay. So that is a cobalt chloride test, and using this test, you can say that this is a oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. Now, uh, we are talking about emulsion, but when you are just have uh, oil and water, but you have to give some additives or you have to give some uh, external diving force. So to get an emulsion easily, we usually use an emulsifying agent. Okay. So these are the subject, sub substances which are added to the emulsions for the stabilization purpose. Okay. Once you will prepare the emulsions, okay, adding the emulsifying agent, that will also help to stabilize the emulsion. If we see the, what is the characterization of the uh, emulsifier, so they are the substances which have a hydrophilic end as well as hydrophobic. In this picture, you can see that when you add the emulsifying agent, then the uh, the tail, I mean tail which is the hydrophilic, that will just go inside where the oil is present and other, the polar part will be outside. So this is a typical uh, typical distribution of the uh, emulsifying agent to produce the critical micelle. Okay, I mean, micelle, and they will produce the micelle, and that concentration, at a particular concentration, they produce this type of structure that is called the critical micelle concentration. Usually, if we have a sulfate tank like SDS, okay, once you uh, put the SDS in water, you will see that there's some uh, uh, micelle is formed. Okay, so. That is called the critical micelle concentration at where the minimum IFT and minimum surface tension will be produced. They are soluble in uh, both water and oil. As I said, that polar head will be of the water and non polar will be of the oil. Emulsifier forms a layer between the dispersed phase and the 
dispersion medium. Therefore, thereby preventing the dispersed phase particles to come together to form larger particles and separate out. Another criteria, emulsifier can be cationic, anionic, even non-ionic. And there's another type that is called deuteronic. Cationic means the head group, okay? The head group, this is the hydrophobic affiliate, the head group will be positive. Anionic means the head group will be negative. Non-polar means there is no charge, okay? And another one is deuteronic means both positive and negative part is present. Okay, so these are the four types of emulsifier, emulsifier that, are, that are also called surfactants. So another thing is that if the emulsifier is more, more soluble in water, then the water becomes the dispersion medium and oil becomes the dispersed phase. And hence we get oil in water emulsion. As I already discussed, how we get oil in water emulsion. On the other hand, if the emulsifier is more soluble in oil, then oil becomes a dispersion medium and water becomes a dispersed phase. So this is very important characteristics of emulsifying medium. Okay. And next one is the uh, commonly used emulsifier for oil in water emulsions are proteins, drums, or salts. Okay, these are some examples. And the commonly used emulsifier for water in oil emulsion are heavy metal salts or fatty acid, long chain alcohol. So these are the examples, okay, that uh, the emulsifier that are used for oil in water emulsion diversion and water in oil emulsion diversion. So this is all about the emulsifying agent. Now, once you have prepared the emulsion, then maybe you can also separate out. I mean, you prepare the emulsion oil in water or water in oil. And again, if you just give another driving force, then your emulsion can be broken. Can be broken. Okay, so that is the, that is called actually the de-emulsification also. So the influencing factor is the heating. If we give the heat, then maybe emulsion can be separated, emulsion can be broken. If we do the centrifuge and if we do the freezing, because suppose you prepare the email such emulsion and where excess amount of uh, excess amount of particular uh, amount of solution is present, so you need to separate out. One is heating. Once you start heating, then again what you will do that your uh, oil and water emulsion will be broken, and you can get the oil and water present. In case of centrifuge. After taking some emulsion, if you just do the centrifuge fuse, and what happens, that again water and oil will be separated because you are giving some driving force from outside. And freezing, freezing means here suppose you have oil and water, and both the liquid has different freezing point. So you are going to such such freezing point where oil can be freeze, but water cannot be freeze. Okay, even certain cases. Then what you will see that oil will be free and water will be not free. So you get the two different uh, material and you can again, after extraction or after just uh, uh, separating, then you can get oil and water separating. So these are the separation of emulsions. Yes, it's very easy. Uh, if I ask that what are the different techniques for the emulsion separation, then we have to discuss these three points with your own words. So okay, there's nothing hard. You just say heating and how it happens. And very simple diagram you can easily draw and this is a little bit critical diagram but you can just draw this symmetric diagram not like this uh, microscopic structure next effect of emulsion in program now we already know about the emulsion what are the different types of emulsion what are the uh, emulsifying agents and what are their characteristics and how to separate the emulsion now we'll see how it affects the corrosion if the probability of corrosion is low if water forms an emulsion with oil. Okay. In oil, in water and oil emulsion, the oil is continuous phase, therefore, its contact conductivity is low, so it does not sustain the corrosion. On the other hand, the probability of corrosion is high in oil water emulsion because this type of emulsion, the conductive water is a continuous phase. So if I ask that, uh, discuss the um, effect of emulsion on corrosion. So you have to discuss these three points. Okay. And here I'm just showing that uh, if your water cut is uh, increasing in this way, then uh, the emulsion is getting separated. Okay, emulsion, 
water dispersion, oil water intermittent wetting, oil adsorption, and crude oil partition. So that I already discussed in the status part. So this is actually the main portion of the effect emulsion in solution. Now, next topic is the weightability. As I said that metal surface weightability also affects the solution. So before uh, going to that part, uh, just, uh, just talk about the weightability. What is weightability? Weightability of a liquid uh, is the ability of a liquid to spread over a surface, okay, rock surface or solid surface in presence of another invisible liquid. Suppose you have oil and water and you have a rock surface. If this rock surface is more oil, then the oil can easily disperse, okay, easily spread on the surface. So here the symmetric diagram that if you have a solid surface and you put a liquid, okay, and here another uh, uh, liquid is the vapor, another fluid is the vapor. So based on this contact angle, we can say that uh, what is the nature of the weighting, the yeah, weighting phase, okay, is it water weight, is it oil weight, or it is mixed weight. I think you know the um, value of the contact angle, so which is here equal to zero, this is absolute weighting, it is equal to, which are less than equal to, um, I mean, which are less than equal to 90, this is good weighting, and uh, theta less than 180, this is bad weighting, and theta equal to 180, absolute non weighting. But these things also maybe change in different uh, directions. Suppose you are putting a oil drop in the surface. So when this oil total is sprayed on the surface, then you can say that your contact angle is zero. Okay, contact angle is zero. So it's absolute weighting. But if you take this uh, oil as a continuous case and you are putting a water, so what you will see if this water will form a 180 degree angle, then you can say this is totally non weighting for the water. Okay. So that is the that is some of the um, uh, parts that uh, we uh, use for the um, uh, for the justification of the weightability of the surface. And these are the typical images of the steel when you're putting the water in the steel. So giving 157 degree, 151 degree, 148 degree. So based on these things, we can say that how much uh, uh, the efficiency of the liquid can spill on the surface. This is the contact angle measurement device. This is called sometimes goniometer. We usually put a surface here, solid surface and um, drop and, and just uh, give a drop on the surface and taking the photos, okay, using a very sophisticated camera. And based on the um, photo, we can just draw the contact angle and we can say that is uh, what is the contact angle value. And based on the contact angle value, we can say the weightability nature of the surface. Now, how, Weightability can affect the corrosion. Suppose if a metal surface is water weight, okay, is water weight, then corrosion possibility is high. If it is water weight, then all this water will be attached to the surface. And as it is it is, it is under the weighting condition, then electrochemical reaction will start, uh, start and corrosion will take in place. If the metal surface is less water weight, corrosion susceptibility is less. Yeah, definitely. If it is not water weight, then always uh, it will be not weighting by the water and then your corrosion can be taken. If metal surface is oil weight, corrosion rate is also low. But I'm not saying that it has no corrosion, but if it is oil weight, then it is lower than the water weight. And if the metal surface is intermediate weight, the corrosion rate is more than oil weight, but less than water weight, and also corrosion rate, rate is moderate. Based on the material of the steel, the weightability may be changed and corrosion rate can be given. So this is all about the weightability case on the corrosion. Now there's another important part is the hydrogen sulfide corrosion. As I said, that when we are uh, transporting crude oil and if it is a, there's a sour gas is present, so that is the hydrogen sulfide. So if hydrogen sulfide is present, then, then there's some corrosion will happen. So let's say, uh, Oh, what about uh, what is hydrogen sulfide effect on the corrosion? Hydrogen sulfide corrosion and its prevention is an important topic in a range of industrial processes and environments, including oil and gas and distillated activities. Mild steel is a popular structure steel in this industry, but is susceptible to surface scale formation and associated corrosion action 
the prevention of which requires some special methods. Okay. And another case, mild steel is a well-known structured material in the petroleum industry due to its low cost, good mechanical and corrosion resistivity properties. The presence of some pollutants may mainly sulfide in the oil itself uh, can be affect and performance of the mild steel in the petrochemical industry. Now we'll see the what is the actual mechanism. Okay, you can go through the slide. I'm not talking about this thing, but uh, based on the diagram, I can explain. Okay. So, in this diagram, when you have iron, steel, steel iron, and uh, there's a presence of uh, hydrogen sulfide. So, there are two parts. Okay, in the two parts, there's some corrosion maybe happen, and uh, uh, machinite uh, material, I mean, the corrosive product may be uh, produced. So, in part one, after Fe plus H2S, when it is absorbed on the surface, so it is, it is uh, that's why it's sitting adsorbed. Okay, in part one. First, it's produced AT plus HS adsorption minus plus H plus. And again, it will produce APH is minus plus H plus. And according to, again, there's some, um, there's some addition will take place and just release of the electron, it will produce the H. And here you can see that APH is plus plus H plus one electron, it is producing A plus. Okay. So here, we will see that after Taylor pairing, after Taylor pairing, Taylor pairing, Fe2H2 is produced and Fes machinoide is produced. And that is the corrosive product. Okay. So, and in the second way, second part, it is just following another direction where also Fe2H2 as well as Fes is produced. What happened actually? Here, here another substance is produced that is Ap plus S minus, okay. And Taylor pairing is the concept of hard acid soft base, okay. Ap2 plus is the, sometimes the borderline acid or sometimes it's called hard, hard acid, acid and S2 minus is the soft base. So that's 